Hello. My name is Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks. And my name is James Maynard, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James. I'm handling the chat tonight, so please chat with us. I'll pass it on to Beth, and she can talk directly to you. And you have come to Lighting the Way, Granny Raps and Rocks. So take it away, Granny. Thank you. So this is the show where we have commentary and uh, where I play the piano uh, to commentary. And Thursday nights, we have magical improvs where we both play music, and it's pretty much all music. So anyway, tonight is a big night here because I think that for now, I'm wrapping up the series on empowering ourselves instead of the egos. And I hope you've been enjoying this series. I think we're, this would be part six. But I'm really wrapping this up by making a shift. And what um, we're talking about today is how the ego can evolve. Yes, the ego can evolve. So let me just recap just a little bit of we already have a... F oh, yes, and Tracy is here, and she says hello, sends love and caring. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. And Blanquita says hello, Beth and James from Ecuador, and giving us a couple of hearts of love. Thank you. Hola, Muchas gracias. Blanquita. So here we go. Um when we first started talking about the ego, and that may have been about six weeks ago, uh, I was uh, explaining that the ego develops really as soon as we are born, or maybe even before, and it is the awareness of individual existence, and it is integrally connected with our survival instinct. And here we go. Oh, and Catalina says good evening from Cat and Lizzie. Hugs and kisses. Oh, hello. Thank you, hugs Cat and, and Lizzie. Yes. Hugs and kisses back, indeed. So, that means, in a way, you know, if you think about it, that when we're born, we're pretty infantile, right? So, we don't have a lot of consciousness, and it's all about us, and we don't realize that people around us also need to be well for us to be well well you know what i mean the baby isn't thinking oh mommy needs a nap it's like oh i'm hungry i'm wet and amy <laughs> says hi beth and james i'm excited to hear more about this topic and she sends <laughs> hearts of love and caring and thank you amy and, yeah connection i'm pretty excited thank about you. it too so thank you so then I was explaining that we get into certain patterns of how we survive in the world, that we learn, especially in our families, you know, what should we do in order to stand out, get our needs met? I mean, we can be the smartest, we could be the dumbest, we could be the healthiest, we could be the sickest, we could be whatever, the most helpful. Uh, uh, uh. So... We're always trying to compete with everybody else for attention and to have our needs met. And how that works really depends on us, you know, what our genetic uh, construction is, but it also depends on the family we were born into. So we discovered that the ego, which is like a persona, is something we have created out of our desire to survive, which is perfectly normal. The problem came when we started to identify that we are the ego. Like we think of these behaviors or personality characteristics as us. And we take it as just like, oh, well, that's the way we are. But maybe we aren't that way. Maybe that's just our egos, eh? right? So we think that's us. Okay, so may say I was very competitive in order to survive in my family. And so I think I'm very competitive. But maybe I'm not. Maybe I've been conditioned because that is what has gotten me where I need to go. So 
if you think about it, the ego is kind of like a, a program, like a computer program, you know, and we have been programmed to be a certain way in order to survive, and we think that's us. Well, so what happens to the poor little self? Who knows? What self? Uh, I am my ego, or we think we are our egos. And very often, you know, I'm a counselor, an intuitively guided counselor, and people say, yeah, but that's the way I am. I am this way. I am this way. I am. Well, maybe you aren't this way. Maybe you had to be that way, or you thought you had to be that yeah. way. What if you grew up in a tough neighborhood, and so you had to suppress your delicate sensitivities right. and, and to be a tough person? Exactly. Or maybe you had to compete by being the most fragile. You know what I mean? And so you think you are. So, okay, so step two is like, all right, so now we're recognizing that we identify with the ego and we are not we, we are it. It is us. In other words, we think we are it. So the, the problem is that the ego is very young and childish and doesn't have much of a perspective on things because, like I said, the baby only thinks about itself. So we tend to have short-term thinking and all me. It's me, 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 me. And so there's the ego. Well, okay. So now when we are so invested and we believe that we are the ego and the ego is, our, is us, we don't even question most of our behaviors. Let's say, oh, yeah, you know, dad wanted to chip off the old block and so uh, uh, he was a lawyer, I'm going to be a lawyer. And maybe I'm not really lawyer material. Maybe I'm really better suited to be a carpenter. I can't even let myself think about that because then what would happen to dear old dad and you know I might lose the inheritance or the love or something or other so it becomes very scary. Or he becomes disapproving. Of disapproving becomes very scary to be ourselves and it's not just dear old dad it could be your friends like you were talking about in the neighborhood so there's a lot that happens there so I'm just kind of recapitulating before I get to the new meat. Okay, so now, a couple of shows ago, I said, well, maybe the ego would join us. Maybe the ego could finally, like, get ad more adultish, right? And say, well, this ain't working. You know, me spewing out all this toxicity into the air, belching out fumes, putting out a lot of fumes into the air, and uh, then I have to breathe it. You know, I have to breathe it too. And you, with your, you know, car that you haven't smogged or anything, it's belching. We had this. We lived in a, a, a county in Oregon where people just really didn't bother. You know, and so many, it's like, oh, yeah. So every time you want to take a walk in the great outdoors, if there was a street there, you were breathing <gasps> toxic fumes, right? Okay. So the fact is, we are not individuals. And I talk about that a lot in this series. And watch the whole series. Uh, it would really be very interesting and uh, helpful. So we, we get confused because we're not recognizing that we are completely dependent on one another and we aren't individuals. So the ego is the awareness of individual existence and we aren't really individuals. And I talk about that at length. Well, so then we say, all right, let's invite the ego to get smarter to come on board. Okay, so ego, get on board with this. All right, now why would the ego get on board? Because maybe it's getting a little smarter and it's beginning to realize that just living our own lives selfishly, self-centeredly is actually destroying the planet. I mean, look at the weather. Do I have to tell you, you know, about the weather? Well, not to mention creating dysfunctions in relationships. Totally. I mean, who's going to want to relate to you if it's all about you? Ugh. Of course, uh. narcissism is a more extreme example of that, but to, to a greater degree, uh, to a, so, or a greater or lesser degree, uh, it's constantly there in, in relationships, in families, all of that. Absolutely true. So now, so I st talked last week about how we need to release the need to prove ourselves, and we've given a lot of examples of how you can tell you're in your ego and how you're thinking. Uh. 
Oh, and Todd says, hi, Beth and James. And he sends uh, love and musical notes and caring. Good to see you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. So here we have, we've gotten to the point that we're beginning to understand mm -hmm. that just coming from the ego is very self-destructive. Destroys the whole web of life. Uh, we're like, there's no place for wildlife. We're destroying the biodiversity on the planet. And we only think about us and our species, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I think about me. So it's, see, it's even collective. It's like we think about our species, and except for my dog, you know, which, uh, as opposed to anybody else. So, so this is a very quick summation of what we've been talking about. So now what am I talking about tonight? I'm how saying to help the ego evolve. How can the ego evolve? Well, so the first thing I said is we are not our egos, right? We identify with our egos, but we really aren't our egos. Maybe we're something else. Maybe we are like the tender shoot that James was talking about. Or we're really selfish and we're trying to look holy because that's how we got you know, oh, oh, such a good child, you know, so holy. So, you know, we may be hiding all those aspects of us that are not acceptable to our society. It could be a religious society, and it could be just the opposite of, you know, what everybody else says, but it doesn't matter. We're still doing it to fit in with somebody. So now I'm going to mess things up even more. Okay. I've just said, we are not our egos. We are inviting our egos to come on board. Now, supposing I took this one step further, I've been talking about we are one, right? So you and I are one, the whole planet is one. You have a virus in one part of the world that's gonna get to your part of the world, we're all one. Well, guess what? We and our egos are one. I just said I am not my ego. Now you're telling me that I am my ego. Would you stop contradicting yourself, Beth? Well, you can be one without uh, still having differentiation. You can. But that isn't, that, that's a very good point. But that isn't the point that I'm making. For, see, Everything in life contains its contradiction because if you look deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, you start to see things that you didn't see before. For instance, supposing you're out there, I mean, this is such a stupid example, you're out there in the meadow and you see all these flowers. Whoo, there's, and what is a flower? A flower is a green thing that is usually, that has like a flower on top of it, right? It's a flower. But when you start digging in, you discover that there's a root and that uh, the flower is more than you see on the surface. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is, when we look at different levels of ourselves, we see different things. And when we look at the relationship between us and our egos, as we become more and more aware and more and more sophisticated in our examination, we discover something, of course. We and the ego is, are one because we created the ego, right? The problem is we identify with the ego, but once we stop identifying with the ego and we say, okay, I'm not going to let you dominate me anymore, number one. Then you say, well, why don't you join me, number two? And then third is like, well, wait a minute. I am the ego. The ego is me. That means if I evolve, guess what? The ego evolves. Mm -hmm. But I have to evolve in a particular way for that to happen with a certain amount of consciousness. I'm going to let that seep in for a moment. In other words, the being inside who I actually am, this shoot of authenticity has a coat on called the ego, uh -huh. right? But I am looking at this coat and say, you know, it's kind of cold. I think I'd better put on a different coat. But it's my man, but it's even deeper than that because it's more like my skin, you know? 
let's say we're unhealthy, we're eating all the wrong things, and our skin is erupting, and it's like, oh, okay, well, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to fix my skin. No, you don't fix the skin, you fix your health, right? I don't mean you shouldn't also pay attention to your skin, but if it's coming from the inside, you see, when you start being different on the inside, your ego starts to change because it is still connected to us and it's a reflection of who we are and our thinking mm -hmm. and it just becomes sort of atom automatic so the thing that i was talking about earlier right we need to be well everybody knows everybody knows that people are not well emotionally and that uh people are killing themselves or they're using drugs and all of that now, what kind of a society do we have when people are not well emotionally and they're using drugs or they're escaping or they're gambling or whatever it is? We have a lot of dysfunctional people. And what does that society look like? Well, it looks like a society of a lot of dysfunctional people. So how are we going to fix that, right? Well, we're going to go out there with some program. And we're going to elevate everybody and tell them who, who to be. Well, what we really, of course, we need to do is we need to all change and transform on the inside. But the ego screams, no, I've been in charge all this time. This is how you got through life is the ego me guiding the way. That's right. Doing doing my bidding you so my bidding. you can't change now because you're gonna die you can't survive without me no 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 scares us scares us becomes the bully in the schoolyard uh -huh. right so we're starting to threaten the ego is saying well we want to change we want you to start thinking differently it's like no 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 i have always been in charge but supposing we and the ego realized because we are the we are what's inside the ego that manifested the ego to start with and we say wow this is not what i want there's nothing to be scared of the ego is just me it's just me who's scared so then I start to go to the ego, saying, what can we do to relieve us of the fear that's driving these old egoic patterns? And what happens? All of a sudden, the ego actually is transforming and evolving because we're taking away it's food. It's like you're feeding the body good food. You're taking away the bad food. You're taking away the sugars and the stuff like that. So you're building up your immune system. Like when you're taking away the fear? That's right. Yeah, that, okay. So when you take away the fear, or we start looking at the fear differently, then there is suddenly a relaxation because we are feeding our beings what we need. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the same relationship. The ego is looking at things differently. Oh, how can I continue feeding me the things that I need? Because this is my survival. I have shifted my consciousness. Then the ego changes. Now, does that seem impossible to you? Um, I'm wondering if the ego necessarily changes or just becomes more resistant. At first, the ego becomes more resistant because all it feels is the threat. Oh, my God. But keep feeding the inner being and you'll be surprised to see that your ego can relax because you're actually giving yourself what you need just like your body starts healing if you're lucky and you have something that you can do to help your body like some people discovered that exercise or changing their diet 
or sleeping more or getting love or whatever it is, suddenly they're different. They feel different mm. and they behave differently. But we don't get that. We don't know that. And then you said, well, what is the ego going to do? The ego is still going to be a part of our consciousness. The ego is still, because I'm still in existence as an individual. So as an individual, I need to have awareness of my individual existence. But I have grown to understand that I am more than just an individual, that I am part of the fabric of life. And you even see this in a lot of people on the planet today who realize that we need to have biodiversity, that we need to have room for wildlife, not just for humans, that we need love, that we need everyone to eat well and everyone to have good medical care. We, we're realizing this. We're realizing this and more and more people have this as their conscious awareness. Now, you may be an old person like we are. I thought about this the other day. I'm going to be 78 this very month, and James is already 78. So we're heading into the 80s, which I consider old, but not anymore. As soon as I get to 80, that is the new 30, right? <laughs> but... Those of us who've been telling ourselves the same story over and over, you know, say, well, either I am the ego or I have to fight my ego. Both of them are based on separation consciousness. I am, you know, God and the devil. God and ego. Compassion and selfishness. Everything we see as being separate and different but supposing God and the devil are not separate and different but are all part of the totality supposing we and our egos are really one which they are but they have and and as we change our egos can change too supposing that were true which it is And we start thinking that way, and we start to raise our children to see this. You know, I remember when people were very critical of the communist Chinese because the people were brought up to worry about the collective, not just their individual lives. Oh, you know, but that's not so unusual. You know, if, if you were a, an aristocrat in the old days, you had to marry according to what was going to be good for the family. So. It's not that shocking. Well, see, but we worship individualism. And we think they're stupid. Oh, my God, what kind of lives they have. Well, what kind of lives do we have being individuals, being scared all the time, feeling alienated, having no support, always having to prove ourselves? Don't you think that's a problem, too? And all of these isms and um, political ideologies that we have in our heads that are still created out of a concept of separation, which is the concept of the ego, right? But if we start to adopt a different view of ourselves, the ego will fall into place because it is us. You know, the analogy of having a healthier lifestyle, uh, it seems that the ego will change most when it has an incentive that, that sees it's in its own self-interest. And so that's an example where it is in its own self-interest, to have greater health and so on. Um, I guess fighting the ego and, and, and being antagonistic just kind of keeps it fighting you. Yeah. Right. That's right. So we have to get rid of the idea that the way that we survive is to fight. Oh, right. That the way to survive is to prove something about ourselves that means like, oh, I should have all the resources because I am the smartest or the stupidest or the sickest or the wellest 
or the most ambitious or the one who's going to make the most money or whatever. These are all ideas that we have. We start to relax into, so what do we do? We feed ourselves. We empower ourselves. And ourselves will automatically change everything. And I see we have another... Oh, namaste. I'm Ravi Chamaling Rai. I'm watching from Kathmandu, Nepal. Hello, well, Ravi. Hello, Ravi. Namaste. Namaste. I hope you have an opportunity, if you just came on, if you have an opportunity to actually listen to this whole program. So I am leaving us with an incredible message of hope. We are one with our egos. No more fighting. No more overpowering. First, we stop the ego from dominating us. We re first, we recognize that we are not the ego. Then we stop it from dominating us. Then we start taking the steps that I've been delineating in the last few sho shows. And then we change and our egos change with us because like everything else in our world, we are one. So I want to remind you to please like this show or love it if you do and leave a comment. I can always answer you later if you don't come on live and share this program with others because people need this message. And follow our page if you haven't already done so. And come back next Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time for the next edition of Lighting the Way, Granny Raps and Rocks. And we'll find out what I'm going to talk about next week. And come back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific time for Magical Improvisations. Beth Green and the Healing Arts Band. So... We love you, and I hope that you enjoyed this show and that it lit your day. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you with us. Don't forget to comment. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now.